Hey everyone, 412 Sports Cards here, back today with another video, and today I'm going to be outlining for you guys whether you should be buying PSA 10, PSA 9, or raw sports cards. And now, I'm not going to say that there's a definitive winner, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to outline for each one what the pros and what the cons are, so you guys can make the most informed decisions for your own personal investing and collecting goals. So let's start it off with the PSA 10. I'm going to show off here this heritage um, high number Otani to kind of outline some of the things I have to say here. An argument for the PSA 10 would be that you're getting the best condition. PSA is giving it the highest grade possible and the market sees these PSA 10s with the exception of like a BGS 10 pristine, which are exceedingly rare. This is the standard, -ish, the standard highest condition card you can get on the market. Uh, now, you'll see that here in this Otani. We're looking at the centering is dead centered. Perfect centering. Surface is clean. And when we look at the back here, this this is cardstock that could chip easily. That pink, very susceptible to chipping. And these are sharp, sharp, sharp corners and edges. Hard to get a card in this clean of condition. And it looks perfect. And, I mean, that's what you'd like to see in a 10. And that's what you pay the premium for. So that's great for collectors to have that condition, but also for investors who want to have the best of the best. Now, a lot of times what you're seeing with these PSA 10s is that they're also, in addition to being the best condition, they're the best investment. So like here, I'll show, for example, this Lindor from 2015 Tops Update. Uh, these have seen a pretty nice run up. And a couple years ago, they were 40 bucks. I was a number of years ago, probably three years ago, and they're up to about, they were up to 150 and are down to around 120 right now, but they've really taken off. And the PSA 10 is your chief investment vehicle. They're highly liquid. You can sell them easily, you can buy them easily, and that's great for investment purposes. That's what you wanna be seeing. And what actually is key for this is, even if these cards are not necessarily, you could get a 10 that maybe isn't as clean as like my, as this Otani was, they're still going to sell well for investment purposes. What investment investors are looking for is that 10. They're looking for that label and that's what they're going to buy for. So it's, they're really easy to sell once they're slabbed, which is incredibly good for investment purposes. So if you're an investor or you want the best condition cards, PSA 10 is going to be, going to be what you want to see. It's going to be your best choice. Now, moving on to the argument for the PSA 9, I would argue that the PSA 9 represents the best value. PSA 9s are going to sell for a lot lower than PSA 10s. This Acuna, for example, going right on is about 350 versus about 600 to 650 for a 10. That's a bargain for someone who's, especially if you can find a PSA 9 that's in incredibly good condition. Like this Acuna, I consider to be an upper echelon. PSA 9. Front looks clean. There's some minor, minor stuff on that top left corner, but the rest of it, like that blue edge, looks pretty clean to me. And like, that's what, it has a lot of PSA 10 qualities, and I got it for a much, much lower price. And that's what makes it a great value, and why I think it's also, in addition to being the best value, it makes it the best for a PC. If you can find nines that look clean like this, you can get a lot of nice cards into your PC for a lot lower price. Now, a lot of people argue, is this like an investment worthy card? And I mean, I'll show off here another, another one of mine, this Bowman LeBron. I mean, once again, look at that. I mean, the centering, pretty, pretty darn good. And those blue edges in corners, I mean, that the corner right there shows a little bit of whiting, but Pretty darn good. And is this investment worthy card? I would argue yes. The run-ups in price that this card has seen is similar to the run-ups percentage-wise as the PSA 10, which makes it a desirable investment. Slightly lower, so you do, it is not quite as ideal as the PSA 10, but if you're on a budget, it's definitely still a good investment vehicle. Now, I would argue that PSA 9s like this do have an advantage over PSA 10s. A PSA 9, you're going to be able to, this LeBron, for example, is like 400 versus about 1500 for the PSA 10. You could buy three to four of these PSA 9s for the same price as a PSA 10. Now, what that's going to enable you to do is have more flexibility in when you sell. For example, if you think LeBron is a great long-term hold, 
but you also are a short-term investor. You also like to have be able to get cash on hand when you see new investment opportunities open up. You wouldn't necessarily want to sell after an NBA Finals or win by LeBron or another MVP or something like that where prices could shoot up because you believe in the long term. If you own three or four of these as opposed to the one PSA 10, you can capitalize on market swings and still be have some around for the long term, which I think gives you a lot of flexibility as an investor and is something that makes the PSA 9, in my personal opinion, my personal opinion, it's a favorite. As for you to decide whether you're interested in PSA 9s or PSA 10s, but I think high quality PSA 9s are a happy medium. They're good for both the investor and the collector. Another topic would be raw, so simply ungraded cards. What are raw cards like these two good for? They have the best upside. So buying cards like this and potentially grading them for a PSA 10 gives you a huge, huge, huge chance for profit. You have a chance for profit through grading them and a chance for profit through the unparalleled appreciation the PSA 10s have seen over the years. Now these are two raw cards that I have bought. We'll take a look at this Lindor here. This is about $15, PSA 10 is about 120. So I mean, you can grade this at a PSA 10, pay 10 bucks. You're in it at about 25. You can get 120 for it. Like that's big, big profit. And we look at it, I mean, it's centering is near perfect. And we look at the back and aside from this corner up here, May, uh, top right may not be perfect, but it might be enough to squeak by as a 10. It's a pretty solid raw card. Like you got to be pretty happy with getting this 15 bucks when a PSA 10 you got a shot at 120. So you can have successes like this, or you can have failures like this, this Vlad Jr. that I bought. This is a short print from um, 2019 tops uh, series two. Now you can see right there, that top right corner has a lot of whiting on it. So you're not gonna be getting a PSA 10 on this. So you can have failures like this where you're not gonna have a shot at a PSA 10, you're gonna be stuck with it like this pretty much. Or you can have successes where you have a pretty good shot at making a lot of money on a PSA 10. Now, what else is a raw card good for? It's best for those on a budget. Often these are the cheapest ways to get your hands on sports cards. If you're a collector, you just wanna have a couple copies of a rookie, you don't really care if it's the best of the best, great. Go with raw cards. It's a nice way to get them for cheap and add them to the collection or to hold as investments and watch their prices go up when you just don't have that much money around. And I think they're all also underappreciated is how nice they are for the collector. When a card's in a slab, you can't really just look at it the same way you can look at a card in just a top loader or even a soft sleeve. You can really appreciate the nuances of the card and what, what you like about it. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Obviously, the PSA 10, the PSA 9, and the raw cards all have their own unique pros and cons, and I hope this video is informative and helps you guys figure out what type of cards you want to be buying for your investments and your collections. Anyways, um, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.